So I've cut a few pieces out. As you can see, most of them are gonna fit in a minute. Um, what I'm planning to do now is attach the back beam to the wall. Now I'm on my own here, so trying to work out how to do this has been fun. But I've got this little hint of what I've done. I don't know if it'll work or not. So I've marked the wall in the middle. You can see that little, little dodge that I've done. And then I've marked the wood in the middle. Um, I have then got a spirit on it to make sure it's level. And then I've used these supporting legs, which will become the side pieces in a minute, but they're about the right length, to have a little bit of an arc to make this piece level on the wall. Now while this piece is on the floor, I have also marked the wood on two lines. You can see these screw holes. And I have drilled little pilot holes in the middle, then in the middle again, and then 10 second views from the end, and exactly the same other side. So the idea now is to drill through, mark on the wall, drill the wall plug holes in the wall, and then attach the pattern. And then we can move on and attach the side piece, and then the other side piece. As you can see, the bar is now on the wall. And let's just check. Ah, oh, it's dead level. Oh, now I've just got to the side pieces on. Back in a sec. All right, as you can see, all three buttons are on now. And that one's level, and that one's level. And then if we put that across the two, the intersections along the way, you'll hopefully see that that is also level. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to making the front frame. panel on as well. So all I did was cut the two pieces to length, cut the five intersection points. I measured it all out to make sure that I'd have the same size, do a bit wrong there, the same size doors in between, um, taking into consideration the extra panel at the end. And to attach it to the wall to make life simpler, I had this little bit of two by two Batten either side and they just screw you at the front. Otherwise trying to get screws through that length of wood there and into the wall successfully would have been a nightmare for me. Alright, um, we're gonna try and put the top on now or a couple of cross beams in the top. Okay, so now I have added some cross beams um, into the across the top to sit the floor and planks that I've chosen. I'm going to start building the, the top now. Um, this, this wood here is different because I ran out of that one. And I just happened to have some of that other stuff there. All right, catch you in a minute. Okay, now you can see there's a nice wooden top on it. These are all just floor and planks, tongue and groove and cork around the edges once I'm final with it and once I've also pinned it in it's at the moment it's just loose off the top but just to give a concept idea I need to do the doors without the thing on to make life easier so yeah next I'll be building the doors so check out what's in a minute
So the hinges are all the same on every door. The way I did it was I measured about seven centimeters from the top to start the hinge and the bottom to start the hinge again on each door. That meant that they are all the same on the full front. Then as we need to hang them on the support beam, I had the door open and the hinges attached to the door. I put a bit of support wood underneath the door so it kind of sat in this shape. And then I marked where the hinges would need to be placed inside on the support beam. Then drew the screw the pilot holes and attach the hinges, making sure there's about a couple of mil gap at the bottom and the top. So that the door can obviously close. So I had it at about this kind of angle to give me an idea of whether it would actually fit or not. Okay, then attaching the hinges is simple. Again, have them on the door, and then once the pilot holes are screwed or drilled, you can then just attach them one at a time, tightening them all gradually. And that is it, the door then, if it fits properly, will close. All right, next thing to show is the magnetic stoppers. So, magnetic stoppers are very annoying, I found them very annoying, but they're quite handy because they mean your door can't go any further back because it's stopped, and it stops them going open unless you pull it hard enough to break the magnet. So, the idea is this metal plate, when it comes near enough to this magnetic stopper, will make it stay there. So, the way I did it, I placed the door in, it was on the hinges, placed the door in, had the other door open, so had this door open, and then got inside the cabinet, I'll show you from this side, got inside the cabinet, and I placed the magnetic block with the magnetic bar against the closed door, and then marked the two little screw hole sections that I could fit the screws in. Now, the good thing about these is as long as you've got them in the right location width from the, from the edge, it doesn't really matter at this point because you're attaching it to the magnet afterwards, but as long as you've got it in that correct place, you can adjust the depth of them because these screws will allow that to go backwards and forwards. So it doesn't have to be dead center and it doesn't have to be completely in the right position to begin with. So that can all be changed. Next, next you want to be able to put your metal magnet stopper on the door. So the easiest way I found this, close the door with the magnet on the white block. Go inside the cabinet again and then put a pencil line around the magnet that you want to attach the door. Then when you take the door out again, you've got a couple of what well, you've got a template to hang on your metal block on, drill the wire holes and attach the pin. If all is good, you can close your door and everything's going to be Alright. Okay, so door handles. These are really easy, so I'll explain really quickly. To get them all in the centre of each door, we measured the full height of the, the window base seat, uh, measured half of that on each door from the floor, so the whole height, half of it was about 31.5, so it measured up from the ground to the centre of each door, and then a little marking on the middle of the face here on the door meant that we'd get a nice even look across the board. Uh, then just drill the pilot hole and then a couple of larger drill bits to make it fit for the screw head. And these handles need a little bit of a nut on the back with a washer. And that is it. Door handle is attached.